welcome to another video from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And we're taking a look at the latest coin game from GMT. This is coin volume 10. Ten. Yeah. Uh, it's called All Bridges Burning. And it's the Red Revolt and White Guard in Finland. 1917-1918. Oof, title. Uh, it's designed <laughs> by Vezar Ponen. And this is his first game design. Mm-hmm. However, I know he's very familiar... First published game design. I'm, oh. I'm sure he's done. Well. You know, everybody practices, right? <laughs> so. But he is not a newcomer to coin in any sense of the imagination because he is the one that designed bots for, I think, most of the pr previous titles. Well, and other games as well, like Hitler's Reich and... I think he did Labyrinth as well. Mm. The new ones. Maybe. I'm not sure. I, wanna, I guess I'm, I'm not sure I about that. I feel like I may have Maybe we're giving something. him credit for something he didn't well, do. Well... Uh, he's he's been very involved yeah. and as such knows a lot about you know the the inner workings of these games yeah and so uh, seeing him put one on the table that's very dear to his heart was it's nice to see and this has been in the works for a long time yep and I'm sure for him congratulations are in order yeah for getting your first game designed and for it to be something that really is meaningful to him I, I'm yeah. sure that's very gratifying yeah plus it looks great and really is a very interesting experience. So. Yes, and <laughs> that's the first thing we'll say. Very interesting experience. Very different than any coin game yes. we've ever played. Different in the fact that there's just a lot going on. There's a lot yeah. of other things. There's a lot of... You really got to do a kind of a mind adjustment. Yeah. We're used to everything being able to do their actions when they're underground. You know, when the, the yeah. symbol is... The, the embossed symbol is covered up or, or yeah. flipped up. Here... A lot of the Reds and Senates cylinders want to be face-up. They, they want to yes. be active so that they're involved in activism and protesting and yeah. doing everything that they're doing. I, and, and, yeah, so that's, that's like one of the big changes in this. The most significant change is obviously the player count. Yeah, three-player. This is a three-player game. Yep. Uh, and there are there are little bots for each player if you don't have non players, and it uses the new card, card system. style system. So, which actually worked really well, I thought. Yes, we played our game. I was the Reds, you were the Whites, or the Senate. The Senate, and, and they were the Moderates. Yeah, and I th I thought it worked very well. They kicked our it kicked our can. Yeah, we lost to the bots. Imagine that. And it's funny you got on Board Game Geek, and what was the title of one of the threads? It, it, the, How yeah. do you defeat the? <laughs> How do you f defeat the moderate bot? Because <laughs> I think it's killing a lot of people out there. Yeah. But as a three-player game, um, the dynamics are very different. Mm -hmm. Whereas in like the four-player games, you'll have like you know a government faction, an opposition faction. And then, like, an opposition insurgent faction, yeah. and then, like, a, a government, government a pro government friendly yeah, paramilitary force, something like yeah. that. Uh, and a lot of them have a, a, that kind of a, uh, an, an uh, dynamic like a setup. to it. Yeah. Yeah. This one, it's, it's all three players, and they're all major factions mm -hmm. to an extent. Uh, you have the two kind of polar opposites, and you have a player in the middle as well. Yeah. But. They, they are, yeah. None of them are like, oh, that, that little minor faction. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. really have that. It's three big players. Yeah. Well, they're all fighting for the same thing. You know, they're all fighting against each other for around the same topic. Yes. Right? We're, we're trying to make, the Reds are trying to make it, you know, communist fin Finland. But they, but they want Finland to be a great nation. Yeah, yeah. Right? But they just want so it to be a com there. communist nation. Yeah. Whereas the the Senate, they want it to be a great nation, but they want it to be, you know... Inclusive and... Well... A little democratic. They, they will align with the bit. Germans, so they want well, it to yeah. be strength through arms. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Have probably a royal family with the hierarchy there and aristocracy yeah. and all that. And then the moderates are, you know, somewhere in the middle, mm -hmm. right? Let's, yeah. let's temper both sides... Yep. And let's have a reasonable kind of... Situation. So it's like we're all fighting for the formation of this country of, in the image that they want. Yes. So it's, it's, it's very interesting. It is a very interesting dynamic. And I think your statement about none of these factions are, are minor factions no, is yeah. very, very, I think, very important. Because we 
that, oh, the moderates are just, they're nothing, and they kicked our camp. Uh, th yeah, so. that's, that's how we lost to the boss, is you're like, oh, I'm fighting you, and there's a boss. Yeah. Right? No. So not... we will fight each other, and the boss just runs away with it. Yeah. You, you can't Because we that. didn't do what we needed to do early on, yeah. and force him to have to put out his networks again. I mean, that's what we should have been doing. Yes. There's, there's... Realize that now. But it also, the interesting thing is doing that makes it harder for us to win. Yes. Because the polarization goes up. It, it, and that's one thing I would say about this one. It, it uh, The victory conditions are quite tight. It's yeah. difficult to get yourself into a position. to. And uh, coin games, are typically it's that way, right? Yeah. Winning is not easy in these games. No, no, no. And this w winning winning at a victory check. Yeah. A lot of times you win by the game just running out. Right. But you and win, whoever's closest... You win with minus seven points. Right. But, but whoever's like... closest to their victory conditions... <laughs> this one, I feel like it. that is very challenging. I, I, I'm not sure that's going to happen a lot now the bot did it. Right. But it was mainly yeah. because I think we ignored it. We neglected it. And, it. and But, yeah, it's, it's very different. I think some of those are very hard. Yes. Because when what you do makes it harder for you to win... That's a paradox. Yeah, in this one, I'm making it hard for you to win, which makes it hard for me to win. Yeah. And for them to win. Yeah. There's a, this whole thing, so you've got to bring the polarization down just enough so that you can eke out a yeah. win. That's really a, a big crux of this game. Um, on top of that, the uh, the sequence of play is another the eligibility, major change. eligibility, very different. This. Very different. And this took us a while yeah. to like figure out and like remember. Because well, I I think also we were trying to remember it with our old frame of mind. That, yes, I'm saying it was a huge yeah. shift because only two players go at any one time. All the coin games, other than Colonial Twilight, support four people, and yeah. they all have the same um, kind of eligibility slash sequence of play. Trip, yeah, right. Like I, whoever's first on the card, they choose this and this. And then everyone else, one person does another thing. That's yeah. it. Then they move over. Then two other people go on the next card. This is very different. Yeah. It basically has a rolling eligibility, mm -hmm. and it's possible that basically everyone can keep staying eligible if people pass. Depending on the actions that you take. Yeah, yep. so d real quick, the cards don't have the faction symbols at the top. No. There's not a thing. The cards really have nothing to do with eligibility. No. Right? You, you, the first thing you do when you're setting up the game is you randomly determine the order for the first thing. Yeah. And then basically what happens is whoever's first eligible... They choose limited command, command, or event. And then from that, there's a little branching path. The second yeah. player chooses one of those two options, and the third player is left with the last option or the option to pass. Yep. Yeah. So you, you can kind of funnel people into certain things in the same way that you can with uh, coin, with, with the other ones. Mm -hmm. But with this one, if you ever take a command and special activity... You, that makes you ineligible for yeah. the next card. So if you want to do the big thing, you definitely become ineligible. You sit out next round. Yeah. But that's the only that's the only way it happens, really. Yeah. Other than that, um, if you were to all stay eligible, a bunch of these boxes have um, alpha like uh, letters on them, A, B, yeah. C, and D, and you just rearrange those. A, B, C, and D is your next eligibility yeah. order. So. And the bots will pass fairly regularly or do limb ops so that they yeah. will always stay they, active. They always were active and probably ultimately ended up taking way more actions yeah, just, than you and just I did. Just ticking themselves over. Yep. And, 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 so, and I will say, maybe I'll do that next game, right? Yeah. There, there's strategy in doing, as Mark Herman calls it, you should have a three limited command plan whenever you play a coin game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your plan should... You should have that in your brain. If I only get three limb ops over the next three cards... What am I going to do to I make have it to have work. a good plan. Yeah. And I, that's kind of what the bots will do. Yep. They will always stay eligible by doing that kind of thing, which is yeah. nice. Um, but it just... The, the, I remember the first couple of turns, it was like, okay. How do we do I'm, this? I'm what do we this, do? Yeah. doing that, and then it's this, and it's... Okay, great. And, and then, then I passed... <laughs> Inadvertently, because I really didn't need to pass. Yeah. You really only pass if you like the next event, to, to be honest, right? Or, or if you don't want to get forced into being ineligible. Well, yeah, you don't want to doing... have to do a command and special activity and then sit the next round. Yeah, out. like if you've got no yeah, money and that's pass. rubbish. Yeah. 
and you don't want to be ineligible for the next card, you might pass it. But yeah, it's it's a it's a slightly different way to think about it. You just have to change your way of thinking about the. And after a few cards, it was like. Oh. oh, didn't have to think about it. Yeah, anymore. yeah. But just you know, there's a little. It bit just of like, took us okay. a moment to, the, to get used to that. Yes, that different way of approaching it. I, I will say this, and, and we're not really talking about that, but I, I I have learned often from the bots, do what they do because they win. We have played Fire in the Lake with the bots. <laughs> oh. I think the VC bot trashed us couple of years ago, like a year ago. Oh, yeah, I've been trashed by a lot of bots. We did some other bot for one, and it destroyed us. And I'm like, what in the heck? I've done plenty of bots for root, Dragon. For Root, I think you used the bot and but it destroyed you. Once you can grok the bots, they are beatable. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. do have to have a human element. Like, there comes a point where you can't just do what yeah. they do. Like, you can't you do gotta, the same thing over and yeah. over again. Uh, but it, the three, the, yeah, that and it being a three player game was a nice dynamic. Three yeah. players probably will get to the table with more groups. Yep. Once that Because it's hard to get four together. people that want to sit down for a three hour game. Yeah. This you can get many people. Three people. Say it's hard to get two. Well, but, but yeah. getting three is easier than four. Yeah. Most of the time, yeah. right? And no one has to play like a minor faction. Right. It, you know, you get, everybody's a major player. You get player. four players together and you're like, oh, by the way, you're like. I'm the Native Americans <laughs> in Liberty or Death. Or. <laughs> they're, I'm they're the fun faction. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like, eh. It can feel like players being sidelined just so you can get four yeah. players, and I this one, everyone's yeah, you're right. Everyone's in a good yep. a good, and, and it was interesting too. Function. We played, and I was close to winning. In fact, I had met my primary victory condition, yes. and I was one off from my other one. And you weren't that far behind either, but it was I, that to me that I was like, okay, we're we're all in this. Yes, and that tells me this this game is well designed and well. Play tested and they made tweaks here and there. And, and it's been in the works for a long time. Yeah, I know he's three, done three a years. lot of effort uh, into that kind of stuff to yeah. make this game work and for it to be good. And yeah. it takes a lot of pride in this one. Yeah. Um, other than that, though, the cards. So you don't have the the factions at the top for eligibility, but the cards are very similar, right? Yeah. You'll have ones which are just an event. Some of them which are dual events where it's shaded and unshaded. Yeah. Um, there are capabilities. Yes. They're very different than normal capabilities. Yes. The capabilities are very different. So the capabilities are basically weapons of war that you're going to use in the second half Phase of this one, game. Once the revolution has come to violence. Yeah, once, this, once right? the civil war has started, basically. Yeah. And that's, that's how this game progresses. You have a 1917 deck where you kind of trying to establish yourself and like prepare for war yeah and then the second half of the 1918 uh, deck which is a different color you're like full blownsies at war with each other the germans will start to invade and land you might you know drag along some russians if they yeah. will if they will yeah and you're trying to duke it out and fight it out and it becomes much more combative at that point yeah at which case at which point you can start using much more prevalently your um your capabilities and the capabilities in old games were like uh, like a special ability that you mm. had. In this one, it's like a defensive position. Of that gave armored, you negative two yeah. to the attack roll yes. of your opponent. Or an armored train, which you can ride into town. All right, and get a plus one in combat. Yes, or uh, the, the Germans can get Jaegers. The, yep. the Senate can get Jaegers from Germany. And they can, yeah, there's some cannons as well. So most of those are just combat modifiers. Yeah. You can commit two... To to any anyone one battle. combat, and frankly, it's hard to get more than. I don't know if you'll have that many. Well, and and that's just it. I think once we finally got to that fighting aspect, it became obvious to me. Oh, maybe we needed a couple more of those. But we kind of went back, and there's only maybe five or six cards that have them. Yes. It's not like there's thirty cards that give you all these capabilities. Now, some of your <laughs> special activities, you can get a prepared. But yeah, I think and position I, you can get some, but that increases vassalage, which it puts does. you further yep. away. It from makes it harder because yep. you want to be. Everyone wants to be an independent Finland, basically. Yeah, yep. and you have to always remember that you can't get all the Jaegers and the troops from Germany. And there's no then price to pay. You're, yeah, now you're, there's you're, a price to pay. You're a German vassal at that point. Yeah, and that so again, always interesting decisions to make. But I think what that means is in the second phase when you start getting to real combat. You don't have that many capabilities. No. What it means is is that there will be one or two massive battles 
that and will, they got to be key battles that will be pivotal. Yep. Or you might have three or four skirmishes where mm -hmm. you add maybe one over here, one over there. But I think <laughs> there'll be some very obvious key battles. Like if the yeah. Senate, they're going to try and take Helsinki. They'll mm -hmm. put them into victory conditions, you know, because it's worth two population in a town. Yeah. Then they're going to commit everything to that. Yep. Which means the defense is going to commit everything to that. Yep. We're going to have a massive war. A whole bunch of people are going to die. Yeah. And, uh, and then it's going to be fight back and forth mm -hmm. until someone's got control of it. And it, it, it just... I don't know, it's, it's very interesting mm. the way that that stuff kind of plays out. Yeah. And, and I... So... Oh, gosh. I, this game, in a sense, reminds me of Pendragon. Mm -hmm. In that that game has a very distinct story. You yeah. start all under nice Roman control, all the roads work, yeah. everything deteriorates and everything goes to hell mm -hmm. every time. That's just the passage of time does that. It's very yeah. difficult to avoid that kind of thing happening. And this is the opposite, where it's everything's kind of nothing, and everyone's building, 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 and then there's just this fight, yeah, fight, 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 fight at the end, and it yeah. becomes very frenetic in a way. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I, it, I've enjoyed games, the coin games, where there is a nice story arc like oh, yeah. that. Yeah. It just, it's a little bit different yeah. from some of the first ones, where it's kind of a sandbox. You kind of do whatever you yep. want. I actually really liked that element of this game, that 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 narrative, that building narrative. Yeah, I, I thought I felt it. I thought it was very interesting. I could see it changing in the cards, which was also very interesting. There's a lot to like about this game, but we talked about this. Man, if you're a coin veteran, you got to play this one two or three, maybe four times yeah. to really get it. Yes, before to, to do it you're, well, especially you're going to go back and really feel like you can. Yeah, there was make it. There's a lot of um, nuance mm -hmm. to how some of this stuff works. You got to build, you got to rally guys and put them out. Yeah, but then you've got to do activism to get them out on the streets and, and out doing stuff. Once they're now active, you can do a lot more with them. Yeah, but then it's it, it, it's you're doing all of that stuff trying to eliminate other people and get control of the things that you need, but you're also trying to balance how that polarizes the yep. nation yep. and your victory conditions. And you've got to worry about preventing other people from doing their stuff too. Yeah. So th there's, there's a lot to consider, uh, which is nice because the map isn't huge. This no, it's is, not. This is a small map. Not that many spaces like on it. Like 10 spaces. And really three or four of them don't have a lot of bearing in the game. Six, seven, eight, nine... There's t plus there five there? cities. Yeah, so it's about 50, 15 yeah. art spaces. And, it, and and so it's so in that sense, it's funny. It's quite tight, but it's also, it feels miles away. The towns yeah. feel so far away from each other. Yeah. Uh, because there's two big spaces in between yep. each town, and the towns have trains that connect to them. Yep. But using the trains is uh, you got to get those train markers. When out. you're just not going to have a lot of those, no. so it's going to be a key battle where you might fight for control up here, and then you're going to move your guys down there. Otherwise, it's sludging guys through these yep. long trails through the snow, and it takes a long time yep. and a lot of resources yep. to do it. Which is great theme, yep. But it makes the decisions makes for a slog really and tough. Yeah, some real big choices you got to make, and it. So whereas in like Cuba Libre. Which is tiny as well. Mm -hmm. That one's even smaller than this. You know, everything's one space away. You just, oh, I move here. We're going to yep. fight. Great. This is like, oh, yep. I've got these guys over here. But, like, that's three spaces away. Yeah, it's even, a long way. And it doesn't look like it. Yep. like, oh, it just takes so long to get yep. places. So it's a huge commitment to do that. This is now vulnerable. Ah, oh, some yep. really, really tough choices to make. Even in just a little tactical aspect of it. And as such, I think it also, that focuses combat a lot. Or focuses stuff in the towns. Yeah. I felt like there was a lot of that's where most of That's where most of the happened. action happened. You were doing yeah. some stuff out in the in the provinces in the yeah. regions for control and points and that was good. But a lot of a lot of the action's gonna be in those towns and then like right next to them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot to like here though. I I, I mean now that we're talking about it, I'm like, oh man, I wanna get back in there and try it again. <laughs> There also were some really cool things. The moderate has a lot of very interesting abilities. Yes. Their network building, their personalities, the news markers. You know, once the Germans kind of 
come on the scene. They create a stir and you have to go out and get those news and bring them back and you get a whole bunch of, of basically resources, which, which is, is the how you win. Points, yeah. Just a lot of really... Now, your your faction and my faction that we played felt very similar yeah to what we, we had have the, the more past. symmetrical part yeah and the the moderates do function differently yeah but they're still a very major power it's not yeah. like they're like some yeah second tier faction and i thought it was nice i thought their chrome was cool and also good theme yeah. too right they're yeah. moderates they it don't felt have very a lot different of, they don't have a lot of pieces nope they're trying to set up their little networks and then they've got a little personality that they're putting out and like you said they're trying to get the news from when the Germans invade yeah. or if there's terror actions or if there's um, taking prisoners of war during combat. Another news interesting aspect, gets put out way. and then they've got to go get the news and then bring mm, it back bring to it the back, networks and then cash score, it in. Score a bunch of yeah. cash there from, you know, selling yeah. papers. And, and it's a die roll. It's a D6, you know, yes. and so it's not always guaranteed. No, but it's but it's neat that they've got an extra little bit of chrome on top of the things that they can do with just yeah. setting up their stuff and, and yeah. making money doing things. Uh, another thing that I really liked about the vassalage that you and I had to manage, you know, you were beholden to Germany. Yes. I was beholden to Russia. The more we used them, the higher that went. And you got to keep that low to yeah. be able to win. I could actually, I'm trying to remember what that action was called, but it was where I mm. paid a couple of resources <laughs> Yes. And then I had to, I doubled that, and then I had to roll under that. It that was, was the... On the front. Oh, I had the same one, though. It was, it's foreign relations. Foreign relations. So it's like you spend a couple of, re so I spent two resources, then you double that, so four on a D6, I had to roll under a four or lower. Yeah. So it wasn't guaranteed, and then it dropped it by one. Yeah. But I did it, and I was like, oh, I was one point away from... You know, being able to win it, I really liked that concept. It's like yeah. you're telling them, hey, we've appreciated your help, but here's some money. Now go away. We paid you back. It, isn't it such a good theme, though? It is. It's great. You, you, you try to use them as much as you can afford to, but, but then not you, be reliant then on you've them. you've got to pay them off. Yep, and you get them out like, of there. Yep. See ya. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. There's a lot of that. Very well done. I think it yeah. all integrates well. To create a very interesting experience that tells a great story, a great yeah. narrative. Well, and I, I really had a good time with it. Yes. Yeah, so. What I'll do is I'll show you the board and at least some of how it works, because there's, there's a lot in this one. And then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got whomped by the uh, by the moderate bot, which was funny. Um, again, the moderate bot and the, all the other bots, they're part of this new card little system which I really, really, really like. It's a really nice way to play. Basically, you shuffle these, and then they, there's a little chart here that they'll go down these priority lists. If they can't do any of this stuff, they'll just draw a card, and then you look at the green text at the top. If that green text is fulfilled, then they'll do this action. If not, then the you know, then they then they'll look. Oh, is this one fulfilled? Yes, they'll do this action. If they can't do this action, they'll do this one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's like a miniature series of flow charts, but it feels more manageable, and it means that they'll they'll do more than just one thing. There's more than one option. There's a couple things. So really nice. Really like those. The game itself, uh, you can see we've got the Senate in white, the Moderates in blue, and the Reds in uh, red. <laughs> okay. And then there's some auxiliary forces. There's some Russian forces, which are these little brown cubes. And then there's some German forces, which are these gray ones. Uh, a couple Russian troops start on the board, uh, but some of them might leave, depending on turmoil in the motherland. Uh, and the German forces don't appear until halfway through the game, where they'll start doing beach landings at one of these three areas and start helping the Senate faction kind of smash the Reds, is, is their intention. The Reds are trying to control everything, get as much active opposition to the Senate, and if they can get the Russians to help them, to muster them, to, to actually fight in the streets and fight the Senate. The moderate faction is trying to get everyone together into the political assembly, trying to resolve all these issues, like having an eight hour work day, having land reform, and having social security, they're trying to get all these things resolved one way or the other to improve the society of Finland 
so that all these basic reforms can get done and we can all agree and we don't have to be quite so extreme on either ends, which was a really interesting faction uh, to see work. On top of doing that, they're trying to establish these networks, which are their disks, and then they're trying to uh, use those to generate funds and money and, and boost the economy. Once the war starts, civil war starts to break out, the Germans might land and they put these news markers out and they've got a little personality. They're trying to then go get reporters out, pick up the news, get it through their networks back to the personality. They're going to score points uh, or resources for that or they're going to reduce polarization as we kind of say, oh my gosh, look at these outside invaders or oh, these prisoners of war, it redu they can optionally reduce polarization so that the political discourse and the civil discourse isn't so extreme. We can kind of come together uh, in the middle somewhere. Again, a very interesting setup between the three factions and quite different from um, what you find in a lot of other coin games. Now, the three-player aspect, the main thing that's going to be different is what we've talked about is this display here. So randomly at the beginning of the game, you just shuffle these and you say A, B, C. So this is the eligibility here. So we're going to start with the Senate faction, then the Moderate faction, then the Reds faction. So the first thing that's going to happen is these guys are going to choose one of these three boxes to go in. They can either do a limited command, or they can take a command and special activity, or they can uh, do an event. Now, if you ever have a command and special activity, you can see these are grey. If you ever do that, at the end of the turn, you become ineligible. That's the only way to become ineligible in this game outside of a horrible event, which I didn't see any that did that. So I might do a limited command because I want to do a little thing, but I want to stay eligible. Then the next player might do, well, I also want to do a limited command, but I also want to stay eligible. And then this last player says, well, I, want, I might, I don't care about being eligible. So I might do a command and special activity, or they can pass and get a resource. And we all know what happens when you pass and get a resource. You stay eligible. So in this instance, what happens is you're done with the card, you flip the next card, and what happens is, is you then go back to eligibility order. And you do that through these little letters that are on the board. So this is A, A is first. This is B, B would be next. So if you were ineligible over the next card, typically you're gonna be first next time. Then we're gonna go C, and then we're gonna go D. So usually, if you're the first one to go and you choose one of these two, you're not gonna be the first eligible next time because you're on a D priority. It's usually very late that that's gonna happen. So, you're gonna, so you can see the order's quite different now. If this person does that and becomes ineligible, these guys might do C, these guys might do D, so they're ineligible, they're a C, which is first, All right, they're a D, which is next. So then on the subsequent card, these people are going to do an event, these people are going to do this. So now what happens is B is first eligible, then D, and these become ineligible. So it's not complicated, you just got to pay attention to it, and it functions slightly differently from how the other one does. So to be able to do what you want, especially trying to stay eligible or passing erroneously, you just want to pay attention for those first few turns whilst you kind of figure out how to rock this a little bit. Actions-wise, uh, you have a menu of actions, just like you do in every other coin game. Some of them will be very familiar to you. Things like Rally, Terror, Attack, March. And the nuances of those are different in each game, but the, what they do is very similar, right? Rally, put guys out. Terror, put terror markers out, usually adjusting opposition and support. Uh, in this instance, it doesn't do that. You put a terror mark out, you might remove some enemy pieces, and it's going to adjust polarization. It's going to make it more polarized, which is usually bad. You try to get the polarization down so that we can have a civil country. We're not going to go to civil war, and that we can kind of work together. That's typically, everyone has to be low enough in the polarization to be able to win. Attacking. Brute force, let's go out, uh, kill some guys, do some attacks. Marching, moving. Real, real simple. The Senate has some political events where they can uh, gain resources. They have foreign relations where they can adjust vassalage, which adjusts how many German troops can be on the board once those come in. 
but you also want Vassalus to go down. Whilst it's nice having it up high, because you can get lots of help from Germany, um, if it's up high, the problem is, is you can't win. You need to have vassalage plus polarization less than or equal to five. So you've got to get that down, or polarization down, or both, to be able to win. And every faction has that. Every faction needs to really pay attention to polarization and keep it at least on the lower half of the table. If it gets all the way up here, everyone's in real trouble. Prepare. You can prepare for war by taking... Um, uh, Capabilities, things like uh, these uh, prepared installations, defensive installations, and sabotage markers, things like that. You can coordinate as the Senate, which means they can uh, place this coordinate marker on the German activation. So when the Germans activate, normally they have a little flowchart that they go through, because they're just a little independent faction that works with the Senate, but they kind of do what they want to do. If I've coordinated in a previous turn, I control what they do, where they march, who they attack, etc, etc. Uh, and then they have a crackdown, which is their way of uh, removing opposition from places. They can move into an area, crack down on the communist cabals, and, uh, and get the active oppose away, which is the Reds' victory conditions. The Reds, on the other hand, again, rally, terror, attack, march. Activism, which these sides both have, is th effectively their way of flipping their units up because in this game you want your pieces to be up this is the point at which they can do things and influence the game uh, if they're if they're face down they're kind of inactive this is the kind of the silent majority is what you would call it uh, they're there but they're not really doing anything they're not actually influencing anything you need to get them active get them up into activism now they can start um, overwhelming opposition, they can start uh, preparing, they can start doing all this extra stuff that they normally couldn't do. You have to have guys face up to be able to use them. It's quite a different frame of mind you have to be in from other coin games, where you would want them to be face down so that you could take an action by flipping them face up. This one, you need them face up to take the action, which is cool, but it's you got to think about it. It's a little bit different. Uh, and there's they have political events, foreign relations and preparations as well, but things like their terrorism does. If they do, I think in terrorism and their, in their activism, they can, uh, well, the activism I know they can, if they do activism with their administrative bases, they can create opposition. They're printing leaflets. They're organizing strikes and, and rallies and organizing... Um, canvassing, all that kind of stuff to rally people to their cause, so you can generate that opposition. The uh, the Senate can't do that uh, through the game, they can only change those kind of things in the propaganda round where you can agitate by buying people's loyalty. These guys can do it by printing leaflets and then do that in the propaganda phase as well. And then the moderates, like we kind of talked about briefly, rally, negotiate, politics and message. They've got some different things here. Messaging is kind of using their little network to move around, pick up news, protect their networks, things like that. Uh, and then they've got a personality where they can place their personality, uh, which they need to be able to collect news, things like that. They can shift support or opposition one way or the other, depending on who they're talking to and negotiating with. Um, and they can publish, uh, which is literally publishing, printing presses, things like that, way to generate funds uh, and, and make money that way. So the action menu has a lot of stuff in it, uh, but probably half of it's familiar. The special actions are what are new to you, and then some nuances within those things. Uh, and then you have a political display up here, uh, which that's to do with the moderate faction. Mostly, they're trying to get people to talk and resolve these big political issues. That helps to get them to their victory conditions. Uh, but... You, the uh, the Senate and the Reds are kind of don't have a, a lot of choice about this. The moderates can keep kind of bringing guys to the table and resolving these issues. Whilst that helps the moderates win, if it's resolved in your favor, let's say this is resolved for us, for the, the the white the Senate faction. What this means is is that oh look, I, I did this thing. It's a bit more favorable for me. Public opinion is a bit better. It means just for agitation for increasing uh, active oppose by buying resources and things like that. 
it means it's more expensive to do that. You have to commit a bit more because public opinion is good because I instituted the eight hour workday or I did land reform, things like that. Uh, and these are cumulative, uh, so things can get pretty pricey one way or the other if the moderate faction resolves them for you or if you've got more cubes when that happens. But that's really the crux of the game. This is the big difference, and then your the way your action menus change, and then also the game being played in two uh, sections. The 1917 section, where it's a lot of preparation, and the 1918 section, when the Germans start to land, and there's a lot more um, active fighting going on. Those are really nice changes. It's uh, something that I appreciated. But uh, what we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that's how uh, the board looks and how some of this functions. Beautiful board, by the way. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I, I love the kind of the frozen lakes and the snow-covered terrain, the, the detail with the, f the fir trees, and even the frozen banks and the ice floating in the bays. Very, very cool. Well done. Beautiful. Very yeah. beautiful. A couple times it was like, oh, is this a border? Yeah, or yeah a little bit hard. Just yep. You just got to concentrate when you're looking at yep. things to yep. make sure that you know you know what you're doing. But uh, yeah, I, it was fun to play with this one. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I would say about this is when you play the full game, it is 42 cards long, which is yeah. not very many. It's not 42 cards is usually a short game for most coin games. Right, right. Um, so it will never be. A, a really long game. No. Uh, it's, Two to three hours, yeah, I think, is and, what it's going to be. And the way that the eligibility works, I don't know. It, it's interesting because it felt like it was just kind of flowing. I felt like we were going yeah. through it quite quickly. Yeah, considering. absolutely. Even though on some, a lot of instances, we all were taking actions. Yes. Right? The way it's set up, we all were, not every time, but every other time. Yeah. Somebody no. has to ultimately be ineligible not always, but no, but, but it happens. You'll get passing every so I don't know. I felt like it went yeah, through it a went good clip quickly. as well, yep. considering. And then especially with more plays, when you're more familiar with your actions yeah. and not studying the played cards, you'll go yep. through it pretty quickly as well. But yeah, it's not it's not like a monster 68-card deck like some yep. of them, or just some of them are yeah. so big. This one is fairly short. Fairly quick, yeah. And, I, and it said there was... A short scenario, I and think, but I couldn't it. find it. Yeah, maybe our <laughs> maybe rule I'm book just is an wrong. idiot. Yeah, and I couldn't find it because I I kind of looked just to. Just I don't to know see. how you would shorten it. It I mean, just two turns basically. I mean, maybe? You, if I was going to shorten propagandas? it, I would remove I would remove a couple of cards from each of the propaganda rather sections. than nine There's, cards. Yeah, maybe do seven. seven. I don't, whether we'll or not that would make that much of a difference, that's really just going to remove eight cards. Yeah, but yeah. Eight cards from a from a 42 card deck. Yeah, it can make a difference. I, I really enjoyed this one because it felt like, even though it's the same coin system, yeah. this one feels very different. This is a new experience. This one, I think, takes the system in a different direction. Not only does it have a three-player system, it changed up, again, the sequence of play... I thought made that very cool. It added in a lot of very thematic elements. The German uh, intervention, the Russians, this political display that we didn't really talk a whole lot about that really dealt with the moderates. Yeah, that's mostly for the moderates to, it is, to deal with. It's interesting. Polarization's interesting. There's just a lot of really cool things in this one that feel, I don't know, it just feels different. And, and I liked yeah. it. I liked that, that it felt different. It, it's 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 funny because it also feels very familiar. Oh, it, no doubt. Yeah. Like this is still a coin game. Absolutely. You still the general mechanisms are still there. Yeah. It's just what you do with them can be slightly different. Yep. You know, instead of wanting my guys underground so I can flip them, I want you them want them active yep. so I can do lots of things. Yeah. And then just getting used to the to the way that the the eligibility works. Yeah. But other than you know the actions just rally. Fine, yeah, I mean, there's, there's still rally, there's still march, there's still, still terror. terror. All those things you're familiar with. Yeah, we, we had activism and yep. political rally, I think, was foreign relations. So they were generally the same. There were just some unique ways that yeah. they were, you know, how they played out on the, on the in the game. Yes. And for anyone interested, on back of the... No, it's not a rule book. On the back of the playbook, I think, there's a pronunciation guide yeah. for all these names. 
Because yeah. I was butchering the names, and then you would say, no, here's how you say it. Yes, and I then butchered them from reading their pronunciation guide. Right, right. It's, uh, <laughs> but yeah, and what's funny, we've actually played a game on this topic. Yes, uh, we did. 1918, Brother Against Brother. Yes. Uh, it was also by a Finnish gentleman. And I really liked that game. Yes. So, I enjoyed it. Weirdly, I guarantee this is a topic that almost no one's played anything on. And we've played two games and on this it. is our second one on Isn't it. that interesting? But having played that, I was very familiar with, at least at a very high level, the things that would happen. Yeah, with, yeah. With the Germans coming over, yep. with the Russians being a hot mess, with the fight being mainly over those the cities in the yep. south, it was where things would come to a head, with the trains coming in yep. and out, all that kind of stuff. I was it felt like, very... Yeah, I, I recognized a lot of that stuff yeah. from this, which is... Which was nice, honestly, yeah. that I wasn't totally blind going into this. Is Red Winter from GMT? That's the Finnish war during that's World the, War That's II. Winter War, yeah. That's 1941, I think. Okay, what did I call it? It's, win it's Red Winter. Red Winter. Yeah, this, okay. is, it's, this is World War Two. This is World War yeah. One. Right, but it's still in this... 39. It's Finland in World War Two, Whereas this is Finland in pre-World War... Is that? Or is this Norway? Maybe it's Norway. I'm sorry. No, no, it's Finland. It's Finland. Finland. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, we've played two games on this topic. Fairly and interesting. Got, yeah, well, and we've got a third. Well, that's a, a third in the same region, but yeah. it's <laughs> yeah. four years Different topic. The, 1918 and this were on the same topic. Yes, very much the same. Yeah, yeah I, so, I, I, I don't know. That it, it was nice that I wasn't totally like, I don't know what I'm doing in yeah. this. Like, I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, feel a little comfortable with it. I, yeah, I recognize a couple of these names. I yep. don't know how to pronounce, and and just I don't know. I had a high level view of how things should go and how things ended. Yeah, which is just you know, just it was <laughs> very violent. And yeah, I, yeah, that game. I remember it just everything happens and just kind of collapses yeah. into this just bloodbath. Yep, it was uh, it was uh, very interesting. And I think I controlled the white guard in that one. I'm not re if yes. I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since we played that. But anyway, great game. I enjoyed it. Great topic. Great theme. Well integrated system. Some new takes on that same system. Very familiar, but also very new. I, yes. I liked this a lot. Yeah, it was refreshing to play this as something new. Yep. Uh, worthy addition to the coin series. Absolutely. As they basically all have been at this point. Yep. But it's nice that it's still going strong, still giving us a new challenge. Uh, and being able to make it a three-player game, yeah. which makes it more accessible. Yep. Right? Who are we going to find to play this with us? Someone. Yeah, we got to find someone. Uh, I, will, ah! yeah. I will play this with someone. Yeah, we got to take this to a con one time when we get back to doing things like that, if but, ever. <laughs> yeah, right. But also, if you're going to play this solo, you only yeah. have to do two bots instead of yeah, three. Yeah, instead of three. So yeah. it's that much easier for solo yep. play. very true. And... It's got the new style bots. A little easier to use. Big fan of those yeah. compared to the other ones. Well, I, I just thought, speaking of those cards, it's like, what were there, six cards? Yeah, some, some of them have six, some have five. It's like, you read the top. Has this condition been met yet? Is it phase one? No, we're in phase two. Okay, move on to the next card. Yeah. And it, it, it was, while it felt random, there was purposeful randomness to it. Yeah, it's basically the difference is... Is that with the old bots, you had this big old flow chart. It was very tiresome. Yeah. So it very tiresome. This is this is also an illusion because these aren't just flow charts. Right. But uh, in the in the old ones, it was linear. You yeah. would just yes, in, yes, no, yes, yes, yes. Yep. yes, yes. So if, if you're you're doing the same thing mm -hmm. until a condition changes, yes, yes, then you yeah. get to the next one. Whereas with this. You might be, out of these six cards, you might fulfill three of these, or only two. So, I, I might do something, but I'm going to do something different, even though mm. in the old bot, I would have just done this again and again and again, yeah. and then I would have moved on to yep. the next one. So, there is a slightly more variety in what they do, yeah, which I appreciate very much, but they will still get to a point where, when they meet like certain conditions, they're just trying to hammer home those yeah. victory conditions. Yeah. Um, which in many ways, once again, I said it earlier, it, should do, yeah. it teaches you how to play that faction. Not totally, but it kind of gives you an insight into, oh, that's how they're scoring. <laughs> well, yeah, it's... it's but, but you can't do it exactly like that. But it's, you win by going for your victory conditions. Isn't that the key to every game? Isn't it? 
Here's, yeah, but I I forgot the I'm game was about so the cones. Dumb. Yeah, right. We're I, all dumb. I lose every coin game <laughs> because I don't yep. do that. I understand. And it's like go for no, your no, victory no. conditions. Stop. Do your victory conditions. Stop condition. trying to do all the other stuff. Yeah. Just do your victory <laughs> conditions. Yeah. And, and I thought you did a good job in this one. You were building your support to get money, and then you were trying to control these cities. It was hard. I'm yes. not going to lie. That was hard. It was hard. But <laughs> now that the Germans were coming, it was getting easier. Yeah. But it was uh, still hard but that's, before we lost to the bot. That's but. what the bots do, right? It's, yeah. It's, they're just going to constantly build up to their conditions and then start hammering away at those. So yeah. there's an element of there being a timer there, an yeah, element of right. that. Kind of like a timer. And that's well how old bots are. They're just going to kind of work their way towards yep. things, and it's on you to win, and then... Try to stop them from doing it. Yeah. But yeah, it's it, there. I liked the new bots yeah. a lot more than I like the old bots. And I, I look forward to using those. You know, Gandhi has them. Uh, the Fire and the Lakes, Fire and the Lakes them. it's shipping yeah. soon, I think. Can't wait for that. Yeah, looking forward. Yeah, looking but, forward but to yeah, it. But those, yeah, those are a nice tool to kind of learn the game yeah. and also to play it solo yep. with it's, when you can't get four people play it that way this is a lot less intimidating yes, than the bifold play charts that Absolutely. I used to have as well it's part of it's an illusion where it is because like, it really uh, is all still a. if you just laid those six yeah. cards out it's still a flow chart yeah. but it's just it's different it's just different. Yeah, so, anyway, I like it a well lot. Well done. Well it done. Gives it a little bit more of a personality where they won't do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. They'll do one of two or three things, yeah. which is which is nice. Yeah. I like that a lot. So, all in all, I had a great time with this game. I did too. I I really enjoyed this. And we've played a big game before this today, so I was yeah. quite tired going into this. We have been playing since nine a.m. this morning, and now it's like seven. It, it's so like I was like, oh, do I have the stamina for this? I do. Yeah. It was a very well. enjoyable. It's not a particularly long game. No. In, it, well, especially once you start getting into it and yep. you've got your actions down. It's a short game from start to finish if you play the long game. Yeah. Which I appreciate. I like, I don't know, some of the coin games are like, this is going to take four yeah, hours. They're, they're very long. This yep. one, you can make it short, which is nice. I, yeah. I like that where I get a little more. It's not bite size, but it's also not an all day affair. Right. I appreciate being able to sit down and get it done in a session. Yep. I like absolutely. That. I had a great time with this. So this is All Bridges Burning from GMT Games. This is uh, hot off the presses. Yeah. I would get it now because these usually sell out very quickly yep. as well. I would guess. There'll be a reprint at some point. There, there will always be. off the coin games. But uh, yeah, I would I would recommend this one. Looks great. Plays great. Yeah. Another nice entry to the coin series. I agree. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.